Success is not what we have. Success is how you feel about what you have. Michael McLean, nobullbook.com, badassletter.com, on an absolutely tremendous early August morning, 15,000 steps with my best pal Clifford. No better way to start the day. Nature, sunshine, fresh air, zero technology except for this broken iPhone 7. Just me out here with my thoughts, listening to my golden gut, thinking, independent, deep thinking, listening to my intuition, and listening to my creator. The mornings, wow, incredible. So I grew up in the, the first five years of my life, I grew up in the back of a general store, watching my dad work 14 hours a day. He would be out on the floor, he would leave, we lived in the back of the house. My mom was raising three children. She had quit her jo government job so she could stay at home and raise the three of us. My dad would start every day at 7 a.m. He'd unlock the front door and he would lock the door at 9 p.m. every single night, seven days a week, uh, 12 months a year, every day but Christmas Day. The only day that my dad wasn't open was on Christmas Day. And I remember him working those hours for a number of years and me as a young, young child watching and learning and seeing what real extreme hard work looked like. So when my dad uh, left the general store business and entered the insurance business, he moved from a world of 100 to 110 hour weeks, you know, eking out a living, living a self-made prison. Uh, he, you know, you, you start to, you start to hate the look of, of your business. You, you start to hate the look of your office. And when my dad left the general store business and entered the greatest business in the world, to me, next to coaching and consulting and uh, the hockey business, uh, his life and world was transformed into, you know, reasonable 40 to 50 hour weeks uh, he was making, he went from five figures to six figures. He had weekends off, Saturdays and Sundays for family. He went to work for eight o'clock in the morning. He was home for dinner every night at 5.30, 6 p.m. So he went from a business of no lifestyle to a business with that's built around your lifestyle. And my dad said to me years ago, when he knew that I had the entrepreneurial bug, he said, son, take my advice from owning three different companies, from building three diff 13, actually 13 different businesses he was involved in since the age of 15. And my dad finally retired at age 85. So that's almost 70 consecutive years of entrepreneurial adventure, and what I call bloody-nosed experience. Everything from uh, the feed companies, to the pool hall, to the general store, to the insurance business, real estate investing, over almost 70 consecutive years of entrepreneurial experience and adventure. So my dad said to me a few years ago, he said, Michael, whenever you decide to launch a company or decide to build a business. He said, make sure you always stop at the beginning and ask yourself the question, what do I want to build? What do I really want to accomplish here? What is the end game? What is the long game? What do I want this business to do? Do I want it to be a lifestyle business? Do I want it to support my family? Is it something I want to work part-time, full-time? Do I want multiple locations? What do you really want? And he said, there's three things that you need to focus on with building any great company. And I call it now my badass millionaire blueprint. This is the blueprint 
that I counsel other businessmen, other entrepreneurs, other small business owners to stick to and to remember. First of all, profit margins. My dad said, he said, only be involved in businesses with high, high profit margins, period. He said, none of this 1% and 2% profit margins that you find in some retail companies, some restaurants, the hospitality industry, whatever it is. He said, you know, that's general store and we've lived that. We've lived the general store, uh, jack of all trades. And he said, you know, when he got into the insurance business, margins went to 20 points, 25 points, 31 points of net income. So he said, whatever you do, build the company, put your prices accordingly, charge enough so that you have high profit margins. The other thing that we got used to very quickly in the insurance business is continuity, which is, is monthly income guaranteed. So when I would sell an insurance policy, I would keep it on average 11 and a half years. Those were my retention numbers. So those are pretty good. You sell something once, you get paid 11 and a half times. There's not a lot of that in a jewelry store. There's not a lot of that in a flooring company. There's not a lot of that in a car wash. So if you're not in a continuity business, like the insurance business, the way I, well, I counsel my men is to introduce what I call membership. Monthly continuity cash flow that is certain every single month, no matter restrictions and lockdowns and weather and this and that, the economy, you're still guaranteed this income every single month. A good example of introducing continuity and membership to a business that is usually transactional is my barber shop. I hate the typical model of a barber shop where a man or his children walk in, they get a haircut, you do a good job, you may never see them again. If you can't get that family back for a third visit, you may never see them again. So what I did with the barber shop, I'm not gonna make any money, I'm gonna lose money if it's a transactional business. I'm gonna lose money if I don't have membership. So if I'm involved in a business, first of all, it's profitable. And second of all, it has continuity or it has membership built in. So that was automatic in the insurance business. Continuity is automatically built in. Renewal after renewal after renewal after renewal. Peace of mind. In the barbershop business, I introduced levels of membership. You know, $100 a month, $200 a month, $300 a month for the different levels, gold, silver, bronze. And we sell these memberships and we, we charge their credit card the first day of every month. What this does is gives you peace of mind. It gives you cash flow. You can pay your taxes. You can pay your staff. It doesn't really matter if it's the fall or it's the summer or it's Saturday or it's Wednesday. You have peace of mind because you have consistent cash flow. So that's the, that's the first thing my dad always said. High profit margins, high, high profit margins like coaching and consulting, like the insurance business, whatever it is, be the highest priced in your niche, by the way. If you're a flooring company, be known as the highest priced. If you're a, uh, if you're a speaker, be known as the highest priced speaker. There's no advantage, there's no advantage in business to be known as the second highest, uh, highest priced. But there is huge advantage to being the highest priced, whatever it is you do in your niche. The highest priced lawyer, the highest priced veterinarian, the highest priced chiropractor, doctor, chiropractic doctor, the highest priced pizzeria owner, the highest priced insurance agent, all of this different things. I even had membership built in to my insurance agency where I handled a handful of clients and uh, gave them VIP service with me and me only. And uh, I would charge them, I would bill them per year for that access. So I was able to find a way to actually introduce membership 
at a different level into my insurance agency. And we did that for a number of years. That that paid. That paid for like the uh, that paid for the salaries of like four people. Just that membership that I built in to people having access to me. So second thing that my dad highly recommended, he said, Michael, sell a product that you're proud of and that helps a lot of people. He said, don't sell something that's second best, whether it's a book, whether it's a newsletter, whether it's a fishing license, whether it's a, uh, you know, a, a pizza, whatever it is. He said, is you, are you in a business where you can serve others and solve their problems? You know, Kevin O'Leary of Shark Tank always says business is about solving problems. Find an irritating problem that keeps somebody up late at night, solve that problem, and you have a business. So I always ask myself with any business that I'm involved in, and it's part of the blueprint, is, okay, what is the problem we're solving? Can we solve it better than everybody else? And can we have a direct impact? Can we help people? So in the insurance business, we were in the peace of mind business. I would, uh, I almost like I would talk in my videos and my TV ads and my marketing is I was like sleep better guarantee. In other words, if you're insured with Michael McLean, you're going to actually sleep better at night knowing that you have somebody on your side, somebody in your corner that's going to stand up and represent you in the, if there's a claim or an emergency or a problem with your company. So I actually had a sleep. So I, my, my solution was a sleep better guarantee. I was in the peace of mind business. Same in the consulting business. My mission is to serve 1 million men, to help 1 million men like you over the next 10 years build your own world, to build your own kingdom the way you want to. But before I started this, I was like, okay, how can I do that? What are my solutions? How can I serve these men? How can I have the best product? And then that led to writing a book. That led to 240 plus consecutive videos each day. It led to my newsletter launch. It led to, uh, you know, different levels of membership at the newsletter level. You can be, uh, you can be platinum, you can be gold. If you want to upgrade, just reply to this email. Um, all those types of things is who can I serve and how can I best serve them and make a product that is second to none. I don't want to be awake at night worrying about, you know, the, the products that I serve. I don't want to be up at night worrying about the experience we give at the barber shop. I didn't want to be up at night worried about the companies that we represented in insurance having crappy cl claim service. None of that stuff. So peace of mind comes from that second thing. Uh, having a solution to a problem and being able to serve that group of people. How can you help more people? And thirdly, and my dad, and it kind of caught me by surprise, he said, Michael, fun, fun. He says, you love to have fun. You love to, you love to teach. You love to consult. You love to coach. You love sports. You love competition. You love marketing and advertising and promotion. He goes, do more of that. He said, do more of that. That's what you need to do to build your world where you don't need to escape from it, where you don't need a vacation. And that's where he was saying, you know, it's not what you have. It's how you feel about what you have, how you feel about what you've built. Um, you can build it any way you want, but you can be successful in business and still have a miserable life if we don't build it with these three principles in mind. So a great question when you're growing your business, when you're redesigning, come on, pal when you're redesigning your kingdom is, is this fun? Is this something that I'm obsessed about? Is this something I'm passionate about? And it's really important. I'm not one of those, you know, pretend gurus who talks about, you know, every day is, is, uh, you know, you're jumping around, having fun, do what you love. But I do believe that you have to have fun in business. What's the point of grinding all of this out of working so hard, building something, you know, hiring people, paying taxes, dealing with red tape and bureaucracy, all the anti-business stuff that goes on now. What's the point if it's not fun? What's the point if you don't really enjoy serving your clients and prospects? What's the point if you don't enjoy, you know, going to work every day, if you don't enjoy what you're doing? 
I love writing. I love shooting videos. I love uh, creating newsletters. I love sharing ideas. So I've kind of tapped into the fun because these are the things that I'm doing anyway. I'm already reading the books. I'm already, uh, you know, reading other people's newsletters. So it's a natural progression for me to automatically share this kind of stuff with you. And why not? So fun. My dad just said, you know, you got to have fun. And if you don't have fun, it won't happen long term. It just won't happen long term. You'll burn out mentally and you'll quit. So those are the three um, principles that I've used in any business I've touched. If, if they're not there, I've never lasted in the business. But number one, massive profit margins and building in membership and continuity. If it's not there, if I'm involved in a business, it's profitable and it's got continuity at some level built into it. Uh, secondly, is, uh, you know, a pro how, what's the problem you're solving instead of just being another, just another barber shop or another hockey coach or another, what's the special wow experience you can bring to people instead of just, I'm just another insurance agent or I'm just another flooring company, like standing for something, you know, great companies stand for something. What do you stand for? What are your, what is your mission? What is, what are your goals? What do your employees believe in? What do you stand for more than just the product that you sell? Uh, and, and of course, having fun. You know, it's, it's just so important. We don't hear it talked about enough, but having fun. Like when I man, when I have a franchise and I'm rebuilding a hockey team, I mean, the hours just, they stand still because I'm just engrossed in it. And then when I go to a barbecue or a cookout or even when I'm in the off season, it's all I can talk about is I can't not not talk about it. And it's the same with marketing and advertising and coaching. People ask me all the time what I'm doing and I'm just like, I can't stop talking about it. That's the passion and the obsession that you want. And yes, yes, you can build it any way that you want. I didn't follow any rules in the insurance business, none whatsoever. I brought in the sports mentality to the insurance business. I didn't follow any of the rules in the barbershop business. We were num we've been number one for six years now. I didn't follow any of the rules in the barbering industry. There's no membership. There's no selling beer. There's no selling cigars and, and uh, sunglasses in most shops. Um, there's no uh, monthly, you know, different memberships. And uh, same with anything else is like fun. Fun needs to be a big part of business or why? What's the point? We have to, it's how we feel about the things that we accomplish. So speaking of those three principles, the badass blueprint is I am launching a brand new Champions Five Star Brotherhood Mastermind this September. It's 52 weeks of coaching every single week, plus two live events in Naples, Florida, where uh, you attend for two days behind closed doors and you're involved with 15 other elite, trust me, elite husbands, fathers, and entrepreneurs. And to apply, you need to go to the link um, badasschampion.com. That's badasschampion.com. The link is in the email or below this video. And the mastermind is half full. So I got 50% of the spots left, but you need to apply in August to qualify. It's expensive on purpose. It's $50,000. The more you pay, the more you'll pay attention. This is about 2Xing, 5Xing, 10Xing, 25Xing, and building your entire world. You can watch these videos every day and you can read newsletters and all these things, but nothing ever in a man's life takes his life to the next level like a great and effective mastermind. You got to have accountability, you got to have hard coaching, and you have to have somebody holding your feet to the fire 52 weeks a year. This is for sleeping giants and this who need a mental kick in the pants to get going. And it's also for men who are already number one, but want to be number one by a long shot. That Michael Jordan, that Tiger Woods, that mentality where you're number one in your business or you're number one in certain areas of your life, but you want to be, you want to separate. It's separation season. That good is not good enough. So that's what, uh, that's what the, a mastermind like this is about. 
plus the relationships you make. I mean, it's just endless. You've got friends for life. You've got contacts. Uh, you know, a month in, in a group like this and you return your investment by, you know, 2x, 5x, 10x. It's the relationships you make. I think back to those Bill Glazier and Dan Kennedy masterminds that I was involved in, 30 grand. And it was all the money in the world at the time. And those literally changed the direction of my life. And I'm still friends with so many of those men and women where I can literally pick up the phone and save myself time and energy and all this other stuff because of those relationships that I made a decade ago. So do what I do. Make sure that before the end of the day, you hug your wife and kids and tell them how much they mean to you. Life is a gift. And uh, it is uh, very important that we take care of what happens in our house. Not so much in the White House, but more about what happens in our house. And make sure that you're present when you're having dinner, you're having dinner. When you're having lunch, you're having lunch. When you're talking and listening to your kids, you're talking and listening to your kids. The evenings are meant to be invested with the people that matter the most to you. So make sure when you get home at night, whether it's 5 o'clock, whether it's 6 o'clock, it's family time, it's family dinner, and you've got both feet in today. That's it. Two words that changed my world. Two words that can change your world. Be relentless.